Hi everyone, welcome to today's video where we'll be talking about human's immune system. Before we start, there are a few terms that you have to understand the definition before we proceed further. Okay, the first thing that you have to know is pathogen. Pathogen is disease causing microorganism. It is what makes you fall sick. Okay? So, pathogen is the bad organism. So, the next term that you have to know is transmissible disease. Okay? It means disease in which pathogen can pass from one host to another. For example, like dengue, because the dengue virus can be passed on from one host to another. So the third term that you have to know is immunity. Immunity is body's defense against pathogen. Humans are constantly invaded by disease-causing microorganisms or pathogen. A healthy body is able to protect itself from these pathogens because of our immune system, our immunity. Okay, so what is antigen? Antigen are the proteins found on the external surface of pathogen and this protein will induce antibody production. Okay, so what is antibody then? Antibody, on the other hand, is a protein on the surface of lymphocyte. Lymphocyte is a type of white blood cell. Antibody can also exist in another form which is as a protein released by lymphocyte in response to specific antigen. Pathogens have to get inside our body to spread infection. What's standing in their way is our body's immune system. Okay, so let's look at a few examples of defense mechanism. The first one would be mechanical barrier. And skin is a very good example of mechanical barrier because it consists of dry and dead outer cells that makes it difficult for the microbes to penetrate and also the sebaceous glands in the skin will produce oils that help to kill microorganisms as for chemical barrier there are a few examples the first one would be your stomach acid the stomach contains hydro hydrochloric acid which can destroy any microorganisms in your food. Ok, 
Okay, the second one would be your trachea. Our trachea is covered by a layer of mucus, which is sticky and this will help to trap dust and any microorganisms, which are then carried away by the cilia. Cilia are tiny hairs on the cells that line the trachea and this uh, mucus with trapped microorganisms will then be carried to the esophagus where they are swallowed and eventually passed out in feces. Okay. Our tears, saliva and mucus also contain an enzyme called lysozyme and this will destroy microorganisms as well. The mechanical and chemical barrier are the first line defense of the body immune system. So once the pathogen bypass the first line mechanism, the second line of defense will deal with the pathogen and this involves the cells in our body which is the white blood cells, specifically the phagocytes and antibodies. Okay. Now, let's pretend that you are a newborn baby and you come into contact with an infected person. And you get the measles virus particles into your bloodstream. It means that the viruses are able to bypass your first line mechanism, which are your skin and mucous membrane. And remember, this virus is a pathogen. Okay, so on the surface of this pathogen, there are antigens. And these antigens will allow the immune system to recognize the virus as a foreign object. Okay, so inside your body, there are hundreds of billions of white blood cells called B lymphocytes. Okay. So, the correct B lymphocyte with a specific receptor on the surface will come into contact with the virus particle. And the lymphocyte has now become activated. And each activated B lymphocyte will divide by mitosis over and over again to form a clone of cells. And these clone of cells are known as plasma cells. And these plasma cells will produce a type of protein called antibody. These antibodies have the shape specific to the shape of the antigen so that they can bind to the antigen on the surface of virus. Now, the second key point of immunity is that when the B lymphocyte has been activated to 
divide by mitosis to form a clone of cells, not all the cells produced are antibody producing plasma cells. About 25% of the clone remain as lymphocytes and they are known as memory cells. These memory cells are able to recognize the measles virus. So, if years later you meet the same virus again, you won't get the disease because these memory cells will react and make antibodies very quickly to get rid of the virus before the virus have time to cause harm and disease. Now, let's have a look at how antibodies can destroy pathogens. So, the antibodies can recognize the antigen and clump them together, making it easier for the phagocyte to catch and kill the microorganisms. And these antibodies are known as agglutinins. Antibodies can also bind to the antigens on the outer surface of microorganism and this will act as a markers making the antigens easily detected and destroyed by the phagocytes. And this process is known as phagocytosis. Antibody can also bind to the toxins produced by the microorganism and it will then neutralize the toxin and this will prevent the toxin from binding with the cell and cause damage and this is known as neutralization. And last but not least, antibodies can bind to the antigen and cause the pathogen to rupture. This is known as lysis. Now, we'll focus at the process phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is basically a cell eating process. When infection occurs, the damaged cells will release chemicals, and these chemicals will attract the phagocytes, which are mainly monocytes and neutrophils. The phagocyte will extend its pseudopodia towards the bacterium to engulf it. At the same time, the phagocyte will also produce an enzyme called hydrolytic enzyme packed in the vesicle known as lysosome. Okay, So once the phagocyte has ingested the bacterium, it forms a phagosome. And this phagosome will combine with the lysosome. And the lysozyme which is the enzyme inside the lysosome will be released into the phagosome and the bacterium inside the phagosome will be killed by the enzyme 
and the digested products will then be released back into the cytoplasm of the phagocyte.